In this tutorial, we'll be looking at grouping and ungrouping objects, joining and separating objects, and reference objects. Let's begin by looking at grouping. Select the Group tool and hold the Shift key down to pick multiple objects. When we're done selecting our objects, release the Shift key, click a blank area, and observe that the cube and the sphere are now grouped together as a single item. With the Pick tool active, you can see I can select and move the entity as a single group of objects. A second method of creating groups is to pre-pick the objects first. With the Pick tool active, I'll hold on the Shift key for multiple picking and pick multiple objects in my scene, such as the cone and the cylinder. Then I'll select the Group tool, click a blank area, and now those two objects are grouped together, as observed inside the Objects palette. A third method of creating groups is to create a group inside the Objects palette itself. Click on the Options button, select the New Group option, and a new group is added to the Objects palette. Then we can take existing objects that are listed in the Objects palette and simply drag and drop them into that particular group. We can also create nested groups. For example, I can use any of the three methods to add my existing groups as a nested group inside of another group. In this example, what I'm going to do is select the Group tool, hold down the Shift key, pick multiple groups within my project, let go of the Shift key, and click a blank area. And all of the selected objects, which are actually groups, are now nested inside of the group that we have inside of our Objects palette. We'll now look at two methods that can be used to edit objects inside of groups. With the first method, we'll select the Pick tool and then right-click on an existing group and choose the Edit Group option. This allows us to edit any of the entities inside of that group. Since we are dealing with a nested group, you can see that the internal groups still maintain themselves as groups inside of that nested group. To edit those objects, simply right-click on that group and edit group again to get deeper into the nested grouping. Make any changes that you want. And then when you are complete, just simply right click again and choose Edit Group Complete. And that backs you up one level within the group editing. When we're all done, we can right click and choose Edit Group Complete again. And we're back to our modeling window. The second method involves being able to edit any object inside of any group directly without having to right-click and choose the Edit Group option. This is achieved by selecting Unlock Groups from the Edit pull-down menu. With this option turned on, you'll see that we can access any object without having to right-click and choose the Edit Group option and make any changes that we want directly in the modeling window. Before we look at the Ungroup tool, let's turn off the unlock group option so we can pick our groups at the group level. With the ungroup tool selected, let's take a look at the tool options palette and we can see there are two parameters. One allows us to dismantle one level at a time and the other option lets us dismantle all the levels of nested groups. Let's choose the dismantle one level. With the ungroup tool active, I click on a group and the first level of nested objects is dismantled. As you can see here, we now have three separate groups that are not nested with the original group. If I were to click on another group, you see that those two objects are now dismantled into separate objects. If we choose the dismantle all levels, then regardless of how many nested levels there are in the group, they will all be dismantled down to individual objects. Another method for dismantling groups is to just simply drag the object out of the group. For example, I will select all the objects with the Pick tool, select the Group tool, and click a blank area. We see all these objects are now grouped together in a single group. Inside the Objects palette, I can simply take an object within that group and drag and drop it outside of that group to remove it from that group. And just as we saw previously, we can now add those objects back into the group by simply dragging and dropping them back into the group inside the Objects palette. There are two tools to assist us with this extraction and addition of objects in and out of a group, and that's the Extract Group tool and the Add Group tool. And what this allows us to do is simply click on any object with the Extract from Group tool active, and that object is now removed from the group. 
So you see the soccer ball has now been removed from the group. To make some changes and add that, I can use the Add to Group option. I click the object that I would like to add to a group, and then I click on an existing group, and that object is now added to that existing group. Now we'll look at the Join tool. The Join tool lets us join multiple surface objects or multiple solid objects into a single object. This is similar to the grouping method that we looked at previously. However, the difference is that all of the objects are combined together and listed as one single object in the object's palette. It should be noted that you can select only surface objects or solid objects with the join tool. Line type elements cannot be joined together. And you cannot mix and match between solid and surface objects within a single joined object. With that, let's use the join tool to join our surface objects together. With the first method, we'll select the join tool, hold down the shift key, and pick all of our surface objects. Let go of the shift key, click a blank area, and now all three of those objects are now combined together as a single object that's listed in the object's palette. A second method is to pre-pick the entities that you would like to join. So with the Pick Tool active, we can shift pick multiple objects or we can window pick multiple solid objects. Select the Join tool, click a blank area, and now all of those objects are joined together into a single object. To separate those objects back out into individual objects, we can use the Separate tool. Simply click on any object that has join type entities, and it should be able to separate those internal entities into separate objects in the object's palette. It should be noted that the Join tool is not a Boolean operation. It does not resolve any intersections between solid or surface objects. For example, if we were to use the Join tool to join these two solid objects together, they are now combined and listed as a single object in the object's palette. If we were to look at the wireframe information that is there, you can see that the intersection of those two solids has not been resolved. If you desire to re resolve that intersection between the two objects, then you'll have to use the Boolean tools, which is covered in another tutorial. The Reference Object tool is similar to the Join tool, however, it lets you join any type of entities, solid, surface, or line type entities, without any restrictions. For example, I can select all the objects in my scene, which include solids, surfaces, and line type elements. Select the Reference Object tool, click a blank area, and now all of those entities are combined together and listed as a single object in the object's palette. It should be mentioned that the Make Reference Object option is also available when you import from other applications. For example, if you import a DXF or a DWG file, you can choose the Make Reference Object option, and all of the entities in that file will come in as a single object. This allows you to use all of those entities that are combined together into a single reference object so we can trace over that referenced entity. For example, I can bring it in and it's treated as one object, and I can use the vector line tool and still snap to the different elements that are embedded inside of that reference object. And this concludes the Grouping, Joining, and Reference Object tutorial.